designed to allow people fairly simply to take the data inputs they need and do some, some manipulation of that to understand where their situation is now and what they can do. We're looking at that more for whole facility areas, um, schools and, and that sort of thing, but it certainly will apply to, to buildings. But there is multiple types of building simulation software out there that I'm sure that about 16 people here will have 16 different models that they're either running or know of now. So we don't need to touch on what they may be, but you need to have that input. Once you have the input, once you understand what you've got, and it's mentioned by Stephen and by others as well, that I'm sure you can then make strategic decisions. What are we going to do first? How much is it going to cost? How do we, how do we measure that? How do we operate it? Which way do we go in terms of providing the solution? So that's a fairly simple approach. Measure the current inputs and function outputs, segregation by the area of function, and then it's always good to know what you're going to measure against. I mean, you can use the quad net zero approach, it's very simple. You don't care what other buildings in the, the same profile are, if you're going for a zero target. But it's always good to benchmark yourself against those other buildings so you know, generally speaking, in terms of doing, doing your own presentations of or potential projects, to know where you're standing currently. Because if you're worse than everybody else, then you should be certainly a stronger argument something, if you're about level with the peers of building, then you know you're doing, a, you're doing okay, but you know you're doing as well as others are doing. If you're doing slightly better, then you can obviously decide how you pitch that change approach. 